it kind of just came out of the blue. Um, I think me and my wife were talking one day and she asked me if I could do anything, what would I want to do? And I said, maybe, maybe one day open a little toy shop. That was after we started collecting. And then it just little by little, I started getting more and more stuff. And then uh, the opportunity came where my brothers who have a Halloween store, a little section of the store opened up where we could have a little storefront. Once that came, we basically said, let's just put the toy store together and run with it and see what happens. We, if we do good, we've got a business, it still doesn't have a lot of stuff that we get to keep. So it works out both ways. My name is Michael Martinez, and I'm the owner of Toy Depot in Southgate, California. I'm a toy collector. I probably started about four or five years ago. I just started buying little random toys on eBay or wherever I could find them, and then just started going out of control. Started getting more and more. Master of the Universe, Ninja Turtles, uh, Karate Kid. I think Karate Kid was some of the, the stuff that I found that I really liked from the 80s that I didn't have when I was a kid, and just took off from there too. Street Fighter was big when I was a kid. So I have Street Fighter G.I. Joes, I have um, Street Fighter games. I have a chess set, Street Fighter 2 chess set. So I like sports memorabilia as well. I don't have any in here, but uh, that's something that I like. Um, and props, like movie props, um, horror stuff. My wife collects as well, so just our little house got flooded with the uh, 80s toys. So what can people find in your shop? Pretty much anything from vintage to new stuff, like a lot of the collectible NECA, Mezco, Trick or Treat Studio stuff, and then a lot of the vintage stuff like Thundercats, Master of the Universe stuff, G.I. Joes, Ninja Turtles, for girls, Polly Pockets, Rainbow Brights, pretty much we try and find as much stuff as we can just and throw it out there. Whatever comes in, comes in. We try and keep a good flow of um, stuff coming in and out of the store. We buy, sell, and trade. Most of the time it's sell, and then uh, people come in and they bring their stuff in. A lot of the time they were old collectors that want to get something new and just sell it what they had in the past, or they're tired of it. Their ex-wives who mad at their husbands, they come in, they'll, they'll sell their, their, their stuff, and then we benefit from that, um, and then we trade. A lot of the times we trade with other toy shops that different cities so that, that works out too everybody's been really good about that so we could switch stuff around from from our store to theirs so it works out for everybody you never have enough um, when I first started I, it wasn't as much as I have now and I thought oh man this is it's not enough I have to look for new stuff start hunting for new stuff and just finding wherever I can find and if I go from today so when I first started, I probably have three times as much things as I had before, but it still doesn't feel like, I still feel like the first day where I don't have enough stuff and somebody's gonna come in, they're not gonna have what they want, and then they're gonna leave empty-handed. So that's one of the, the curses that I have for this. We started May 4th, May the 4th, 2019. So we've been in business going on four months, so. The Halloween store is right next door. It sits on this side of the building. Um, it's about 3,000 square feet. And that kind of started as a, as a fluke. We actually opened up as a general merchandise store. The recession hit 2008, 2009. We were looking to sell it. My brother got a, bought a Halloween lot. A lot of costumes, he bought that for really, really cheap. The guy we were gonna sell the store to, he, he came in and he was gonna buy the store. He looked around, he said, okay, I'll buy it. I'll come back next week with the money. We'll sign the papers and we'll buy you out, basically. Uh, he got in trouble, went to jail. We never, we haven't seen him since, so we just had to go with it and just say, you know what, just sell the costumes. We'll see what happens. And turned out it was a hit. Halloween was a hit. And uh, ever since then, I think since like 2009, we've, we've been a Halloween store on that side. So Halloween's been a huge, thing for our family like once a year so you don't have to work every day and I don't really run it anymore my brothers run it they work really hard from September to October 31st and then it's kind of gives them a big chunk of money they can relax for the rest of the year and kind of just do other things so it works out for everybody
I don't really have any grails. I, I think I have two toys that I I've kept from my childhood that I have an old Kermit the Frog doll that's not here that I got on my first Christmas. And then I have, uh, when I was opening the store, my mom found our box of toys that, that she never threw away. And it was, it was not, there was nothing in there basically. It was, it was one little muscle man, I think I have it in here. That was the only toy we remember having that she didn't throw away, so. I have it right there, so it, that's probably one of the more sentimental things. Everything else has just been bought over the years. But that one's from my childhood. LJN wrestlers in the package, if I could find some of those. Um, sealed, like um, Andre the Giant. I had a Hulk Hogan sealed one. I sold it a few months back. Um, Undercat, pretty much now it's basically in the package. If I could find them in the package, that's basically what I'm looking for is my, my grails. I'm not really the collector that, oh, I wanna find this one because nobody has it. It's more what I liked in the past, like, uh, Brave Star, I had a couple of Brave Stars when I was younger that I didn't have anymore. Um, Thundercats, I didn't have any when I was a kid. Transformers, G1s, so those are cool. I like G1s. Megatron in the box, something like that would be good. I have a Megatron G1, but it's not complete. It's loose, it's beat up, but it's it's still pretty cool. It transforms and it, it does the job, so. The stores, um, it's in Southgate, California. The address is 13422 Paramount Boulevard, Southgate. Um, we have an Instagram, it's toy.depot. Um, eBay, we don't really do online sales just because I'd rather have people come in and look at the toys and, and experience for themselves. But we do have an eBay account, but I, I don't really, I don't even know the name. It might be like my name and a bunch of numbers behind it. But I only sell like, um, kind of random thing, newer things that, that you can find anywhere. So that's the only reason for the eBay store and just have it just on ice if I ever need it down the road. So I don't really do too much online sales with that. I have nephews and nieces, I have a daughter and I love giving them toys so they can get that memory. Um, that was one of the reasons we opened the store is people walk in the store and they think, oh, I remember going to the store with my dad and I remember getting this or I had this toy when I was growing up. I don't know what happened to it, so that's kind of what I want to build and grow is uh, people coming in and getting those memories, those old good memories when they were a kid, they got it for Christmas. Their parents took them to Toys R Us or KB Toy Store when they were younger and, and just getting that, that good vibe, that good nostalgic feeling when they were younger and, and just bringing it back to life for them. So I want them to pass that on to their kids instead of going on eBay or going on Amazon and just clicking, clicking and getting a package in the mail. So I'm basically trying to build that nostalgic memories for their kids when they when they grow older so that's kind of the the basis of the store